Hey guys, it's Sasha with Rice and Raw, and this is video four of the question and answer series. So, uh, we, honestly, all these questions are so wonderful, I want to keep answering them. So, the next question is, Finding nice, cruelty-free shoes for formal occasions has always been a challenge for me. Any brands or websites you recommend? I've actually found a lot of success at DSW. Um, I've got these amazing boots. They were faux suede and they look like real suede. I was actually afraid to walk into a vegan store with them because I thought I'd look like a total ass. Um, <laughs> there's actually, um, there's a vegan shoe store that we, that me and my boyfriend uh, went to in Colorado. It's called True Love. Um, it's in Denver, Colorado. I don't know if they have a website. If they do, that'd be so awesome. I'll totally buy from them all the time. Great, great prices. So I wouldn't necessarily go researching vegan shoes online because they are gonna be very expensive. I would say find faux shoes, like fake fur, fake leather, fake suede. And then like you'll get a really good deal because a lot of society would much rather have real leather and real suede while we're all like, ew. So we benefit from getting that like discount almost. Um, here's another interesting question. Do you think without doing pole, you would have lost as much weight as you did on the high carb vegan lifestyle? I feel like, well, since I already lost 30 pounds before I started pole, I definitely lost the weight. Losing the weight wasn't really the issue because like once you get down the food in the kitchen, you kind of know where you're going. You have your momentum with that. You'll be fine but it's really changing the body composition. Like I felt skinny fat. I wasn't able to lift anything still. Um, I still had fat kind of rolling over my jeans a little bit, even though I've lost 30 pounds and I was at a weight that I thought was meant for my body. I think if I did other exercises, I would have lost, you know, I would have built up a very similar physique. Like if I did like a, I don't know, like a Zumba or like more yoga or Pilates, I think I would have been fine. Um, if I started lifting right away, I, whew, I'd have a crazy body right now. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't think pole is like, you need to do pole uh, to get a good body, but it's an amazing way to get a great body. It's so much fun. I mean, you, you get to do something so much fun, so awesome. And the payoff is great because one, you get ripped arms, get ripped abs and, oh yeah, that's my pole. <laughs> and, uh, you get to show people really cool moves and they think you're like Superwoman. It's awesome. Um, there's a pole move called Superman, by the way. It's really fun. Can you show us your tattoos? Oh, that's really cool. Okay, I will. All right, so I have, I'll show you my first one. Oh, move all, yeah, I'm in my PJs right now. So my first one is this one right here and it's in Sanskrit and I don't really know if it's the exact translation. It's probably not but it's meant to say passion. And my boyfriend at the time drew it. He spent so long, he was like measuring it and all this stuff. And I got that for my 18th birthday. And I, I love that tattoo, it's so cute. And then um, I my next tattoo is my foot tattoo. Let's see if I can do this without being weird. Yeah, I don't really have great calves by the way. That's actually my one huge flaw in like ankles. I eat my ankles so much. But yes, so that's my foot tattoo. It's script and it says so amazing here. The tattoo artist made up a font for me. It looks almost like I asked him to do like a romantic, cool Disney and it really looks like that. And then my other tattoo, which is my absolute favorite, is right here. And that is a uh, Tibetan script, which again, is not the exact translation because it's not possible, but it's supposed to say unwavering faith. And this is the one tattoo that I got when I was like having my binging disorder and I'm really glad I got it because unwavering faith because it's so me like I knew I'd be okay eventually I knew I could figure it out I I had unwavering faith that I would be okay so thanks for that question how much fat do you consume from what oil avocado nuts um, like I said like I try to aim for about 10% for my calories I don't really calculate that um, pretty much just avocado some oil on the weekends I never eat nuts unless it's pesto I will never eat nuts. Like I just, I don't really see the benefit in them. I know that sounds terrible. I would rather seeds over nuts. Um, I think seeds are actually could be very helpful. And if you do have nuts, little, little tiny bit in your palm. And um, there are studies that show that if you have like a palm full of nuts once a day, it's very he healthy for you. Uh, here's another good question. How many times a week are you working out? Um, last year in 2014, I worked out once a week for one hour. That was pretty much what I did. That's 
consistently for a whole year. And then this year I upped my game because I felt comfortable. Um, I'm aiming for two classes a week at pole, uh, pole dancing fitness classes, which are an hour each. And also I'm aiming for two lifting uh, sessions once a week. And those lifting sessions can be like 20 minutes, you know, so they're really short. Um, as long as I get to the gym, I feel the burn, I feel the pain. And I, I, I cuss at myself and everything then that means I did a good workout. So that could be 20 minutes. <laughs> Here's another really good question. I get this question a lot from people, and that is how do you handle being vegan in the corporate world and working at an office job all day long? Do you let the people who get bothered by veganism bother you slash how not? Really awesome question. I think I really wanna make like a whole video on this, but I'll really quickly I'm gonna answer. Um, I handle it like I don't care. Like. I don't care if you're eating meat, I don't care if you're eating dairy, whatever, that's fine. And you know, if people ask me about it, which they do and they're interested, you know, I'll, I'll definitely entertain conversation. Um, I've had some really rude people, very rare though, to get a rude person say something. Um, but I did get, a, I can only think of one example right now, but you know, pers someone said something completely, actually completely inaccurate, like it, I could have totally proven how inaccurate they were, but they were, you know, a couple levels above me. I didn't really know them very well. We're in front of a whole bunch of people. He called me out and I was just like, okay. Like I didn't even care to respond because I knew that like I would get upset and I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable talking to me about things. Um, so I, I just allowed it. Uh, at this point in my life, I probably wouldn't allow it. I would just respond logically and just answer. Um, I don't know, I just try to, I try not to talk about it unless people ask me. Um, but I'm very, I feel very sure in my decision to be vegan. So I don't need, I don't feel the need to defend it or anything. And um, yeah, I definitely do get bothered by like, when, it, when people make rude comments towards it. And it's like, there's no need to say that in an office and setting. And I think that's probably what I would say at this point. There's no need to debate this in an office setting. If you really want to talk to me about this, we can go get coffee and talk about this, but I don't think it's appropriate. Um, it's kind of like discussing religion, you know, or discussing how someone's Nikes came from a sweatshop and how terrible they are. Like, you don't say that to someone, you know, you don't bring stuff up like that in the office. And if people do, put them in their place and say, this is not the time or place. Um, let's see. What is your blood type? I actually have no idea. Like, I have no idea. My mom doesn't even know. Um, so I'll get back to you guys on that. Uh, so this is another really good question. People who crave salt more than they crave sweet stuff. If you crave salt more than sweet stuff, I would definitely, definitely suggest having extra veggies in your diet because it's gonna help a lot with salt cravings. Um, I know a lot of people take um, celery and dehydrate it and actually ends up being like this really cool salt. Um, I don't really think, I think you, if you are more of a salt craver, try out the starch solution. Honestly, like don't force feed yourself fruit if you don't like it. Try out the starch solution. And actually uh, my friend Greg, he mentioned something really interesting and he said that if you eat a food, God, I forgot how many times, five times or is it ten, five times? Greg, help me out here. Five times then you'll actually start to like the food. And I never really liked bananas, to be honest, but once I ate them for so long, it was like a year, I'm like, okay, I actually kind of like bananas. And then since I stopped eating them this past winter and I was only eating dates, I'm like, oh, I don't like bananas anymore. So I have to kind of like get myself back into liking bananas. But again, like the start solution is more, you know, savory based, which might be work better for you. So we have time for one more question. And someone asked me how long it took me to get a flag on the pole. Um, Honestly, that's something more that I was kind of naturally inclined to do, but I never really tried. Uh, when I tried it, it was like a year into doing pole fitness. So with pole, it's not like just one move really. I think uh, it's a combination of doing conditioning for a lot of moves. Um, in the beginning of classes, we do stretches. Sometimes we'll do conditioning in class, like um, chair crunches on the pole, or you know, now we're practicing um, handspring or a deadlift. Uh, onto the pole kind of moves so it's really working our obliques and I think conditioning is very helpful with the pole uh, because if you're just doing moves it will take a while for your muscles to build up to finally do the move um, 
honestly, if you want to jumpstart your pole career, just go lift at the gym, like do some arms, do some back, do some shoulders. You're going to kill it the moment you walk into a pole studio or when you buy your pole. If you have upper body strength, you're, you're automatically going to be able to hold a lot more moves, static holds like the flag. So really, I think it's just lifting that's going to help you like skyrocket there. But if you want to get there in another way, push-ups and then just practicing, um, we'll definitely do it as well. All right, so I will see you guys in the next video for part five. And that will be the last part. So this is going to be kind of a short series. All right, see you guys there. Bye.